so glad you are joining, sharing, and being with us today, getting to know us, and hopefully we're getting to know you too. Um, we're sharing about recently, I took my granddaughter and my son and his wife, yes. or we all went together, my husband and I, um, to Disney for a few days. It's my granddaughter's birthday month, and that was like her gift to, from us this year. And um, as we were there, the my favorite part was really just being with them. And I think it's fun when you see something through their eyes and that was the sweet part just yeah. like today you can hear background noise already here at the church in the gym um my two grandsons are here with my daughter in the gym playing and my youngest grandson is a teenage ninja muted turtle turtle, turtle right, right now, now. yes and he's, he's in full-blown costume he That's is right. ninja hudson yes. right now and so i think the fun part is actually their playfulness oh and yeah but you know, it's really, it's just, that's what makes and, everything fun. And I think that's what the Lord wants to keep, that sparkle in our eyes. Yeah. Even when we're in our 30s, our 40s, our 50s, yeah. 60s, not to lose that sparkle of life. Because yeah. that's what keeps the adventure of, of the God So recently, life. your mom, my grandma, at 93, went to heaven. Yes. And one thing we love about her is she always had sparkle. She yes. was adventurous, and up until really the last four months of her life, she was always busy, always working, always doing that. She was a leader. She yes. was, I call her, the, we She's have the, Linus Leaders, which is our women's yes. group at our church, and um, I always say we hunt while they sleep, <laughs> but she um, really yeah. set that standard for us as a family. I think the thing that mom amazed me the most was I always worked hard, always loved the Lord, always committed to the family but my dad when she was in her 50s decided he was a truck driver i love this story lila i, I want you story. to learn how to drive a truck mm -hmm. and go on the road with me so i'm married i have children so she goes to atlanta i'm married i think at this and time goes to school in atlanta and learns how to drive a 16 wheeler truck with those gears and I'm like, Mom, you are a pioneer woman. I, you would be the woman in the wagon headed to the new frontier. Here you go to the new frontier. Honey, I'm going for yeah, gold. <laughs> I'm going. And uh, she got her license, and her and Dad hit the road. And they saw, did. You know, all the states together. And then we were um, with Phil yeah, in you the were ministry. Yeah, Phil Driscoll Ministries. In Tennessee. And then Dad came on and drove Phil's truck. And Mom... Did that with him. Live, and set did the, up, set did up, tables, tables, took care of us. Book tables, from tape tables for Phil. And we were all in the ministry together. That was back in the cassette tape days. Yes. For you that don't know what that is, you can yes. sear it later. Yes, like dinosaurs, but you know, <laughs> you can look it up. But uh, anyway, it's just sweet that you don't have to, um, there's always something new to learn. There is. Don't be fearful. I mean, I was so amazed at her courage. Yeah. And God wants us to be courageous and yes, strong in the Lord and the power of His might. And uh, we're fearless, to be fearless, unstoppable. So uh, you have great courage. Don't, don't sell yourself short. Well, you know, I believe to be impactful, to be able to be impactful, which I believe you all are impactful. But you got to be able to take impact. And that means that you have to be courageous. Yes. And that means that you have to, and for me, she was fearless. That's something that... And she I believe does. that your hunger has to really over exceed your fear. You know, yes. so for me, like you think about a lioness or someone <clears throat> that, that needs to take a new territory or something mm -hmm. that needs to happen, they may come to an area where they've never crossed before. And the first step is the hardest. It is. Just the first step. Crossing that line that the enemy is saying, no, you can't do it. That's right. You're not smart enough. You're not got the ability. And God says, I just want you in faith to take the step. Yes. And to see people here in the church decide they're going to do a career change. And they go to school. And they're fulfilling their dreams. Yes. I mean, they're being courageous. I uh, you know, I could call some names, but I'm not. But well, just this weekend, we, we yes. were honoring a guy that's got yes, two young children, and we've been praying for him and Courageous. his wife, and he's just made a great career change, and um, he's actually gone into law enforcement, but yes. it's like his life goal, which I love, that he's following his passions, and well, God passions and God dreams, and and just going after him, but that doesn't mean that he did it unafraid. That doesn't mean that he did it um, without some 
impact right. that does it you know he went uncomfortable. on he was uncomfortable because it's, com- right. <clears throat> it's comfortable to stay yeah. please thank you and you may Appreciate not like it. it she may not like it it is so sweet it's horrible sweet. to her i love it yeah too sweet i drink coffee with just cream too sweet but being courageous means that you're not without fear. That's right. You just, like John Wayne said, you just saddle up anyway. That's right. You saddle up and say, okay, Lord, you've got a new territory yeah. for me. Uh, you know, a new relationship. You may think, oh, my God, who wants to know me? There's a lot of people that want to know well, me. You know what? I think it's, it's about learning how to be disciplined. But de- how do you get to devotion? It starts out as discipline. Yes. It's a choice to be disciplined. I mean... That guy had to make a decision. I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to study. I'm going to study. And then that discipline became a devotion. And also, everything's a choice. And, and then choice reward. becomes commitment. And that's then exactly there's a right. great and there's reward. there's a great reward. So God's got some rewards for you. Don't, let, yeah. don't stop dreaming. No matter what the age, the Lord wants us to dream. Yes. He wants us to dream for our, our marriages, dream for our families, dream for our church family, dream for our city. You know, my goodness, look at Douglas. I remember. So we live, for those watching, we yeah. live in what I call a small country town. Well, you probably are listening, and some of you are thinking, yeah, they do. I can tell by the way they sound. Um, we live in a small country town in South Georgia, mm-hmm. which I call, I always tell everybody, we're in the middle of a cotton field. Yes. And we remember when it was like, oh, yes. I'm mean, red lot with yes. what it felt like. And, I mean, my goodness, we look now, and we have Hobby Lobby, Marshalls, Starbucks. Publix. We're getting a longhorn. We're Come getting on. a longhorn. The <laughs> Lord has heard my cry. And I... We I don't mean, have to drive out of town. Our territory is... Expanding. Is expanding and being fruitful. And that's exciting. And God wants to expand your territory, too. It doesn't matter. You may live in New York. You may live in Chicago. The right. greatest... You may... I've lived in California myself. We've traveled. We've lived in different larger cities before, too. This is just where God's called us. But the truth of the matter is it doesn't matter where you're at. God still wants to expand your territory. Yes. He still wants to grow you. He wants to expand your tents. He wants to stretch you. Mm-hmm. He wants to increase you. And you have to do that. But here's the great thing I learned. Many years ago, my husband um, was a professional athlete um, early on in our marriage. And something I loved about that is they had stretching partners. And mom, even yeah. when you were in high school, you were a great um, basketball player. You had stretching partners. I can only stretch so far yeah. on my own. But if I someone else can just push me just a little bit That's right. further and just get a little more out of me. God puts people in your life to help stretch you. They will actually say, I know that there's a little more in you. I know that there's a little more that you can do. That's what I call faith family. Oh, That's what I call power. And I believe we need those. Oh, gosh, we need, I think, today in the world that we live in, that everything is... Looking at things, the negative, and uh, we, they, need, we need people to cheer. And most of the time, most people think that when, so stretching's uncomfortable. Oh, every time, yes. And most of the time, someone thinks if someone makes you a little uncomfortable, you think they're not for me. Well, I want you to know when God really took the children of Israel from the mm-hmm. wilderness to the promised land, it yeah. stretched them. So those guys went from being wanderers to land owners in one day. That's a stretch. Not only that, they went to someone preparing their meals. I mean, they woke yeah. up to food prepared for them manna and quail falling right. out of everywhere, to then having to plant their own crops. Yes. Harvest their own crops. So are you Do willing they, to learn? That's, are you, that, that's stretching. Mm-hmm. The increase in your life will cause you to stretch the increase yes. in your life will actually cause maturity in you. I mean, it's it's really it's saying, well, there's there's more to me. Yes, I think you have to. Uh, we limit ourselves. We do. We are our worst enemy. Your worst enemy is yourself. Yeah. And that's saying I can't. And I love the scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, because you're relying upon. His strength within you. When I am weak, He is strong. So it's not just knowing, hey, I'm doing this all by myself. Knowing, hey, I have a secret help on my side. Yeah, I do. And it's the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Spirit of God that lives in me, the Word. He's and, qualified and to he's do my helper. He says That's He's right. our helper. 
So when I need help, thank gosh, I've got to help her to help me. Well, and he'll give right. us wisdom. He does. And what happens is he qualifies you. Yes. He, he, he says, if you're, what I love is I believe he blesses the available. Yes. That's right. He anoints the available. Now I want you to know everyone's anointed. If you're, if you're, a, yeah, I think the, it's a two. I think it's a twofold. Wisdom is is the available and the faithfulness. Come on. Because if you're available but you're not faithful, you make it's it fifty so percent of the time, then I can't count on you. Come on. But those people that you can count on, you know, my gosh, they got my back. Yeah. They're here. If I'm going to war. I want them to go to war with me. Why? Because yes. they don't sleep on the job. They don't complain. They don't get lazy. If they stump their toe, they're not, you know, every excuse will do. No, they're, they are just faithful people. They just get up, shake themselves off. They don't quit. They don't have a don't quit in them. I mean, they are just, like you say, they endure. And when you find a friend like that, my goodness, they'll, you know, they'll stoke you. They'll put, they'll put fire so on your fire. Why don't you, here's one thing that I love that you've always shared. Because, you know, I believe that we are, I know that, you know, I've been on fire for Jesus a long time. But we talk about how as coals, mm -hmm. when you put a bunch of coals together, boy, is it a lot hotter. And you, but yes. if you get separated, it's oh easy God. to start cooling off. That's right. And so that's why the enemy never wants people planted in the house of God. Because that, if he can separate you, isolate you, yeah. then he knows I can get them lukewarm. And before long, they'll be cold and not even know they're cold. That's right. But when you get close to the fire of God, it immediately, when you get close to the things of God, if you've got a cold heart, the love of God will start melting. Yes, it will. That cold, callous hardness. Yes. It'll melt it so that God can minister his love to you, his forgiveness to you, his mercy. He can then, then it really is like an infusion of strength. You know, and something else I just really want to encourage you about that you've helped me with over the years is you guys have really taught the importance of building others rather than building yourself. And that's what I believe real leadership, real teams, real family does. You know, for me, I love seeing my daughter and my mm -hmm. son and my daughter-in-law and my son-in-law and my grandchildren flourish. I actually yeah. loved you and dad. Like we, yes. we love cheering each other on. Yeah. I love our staff here at the church. I love, we're so blessed. I, I mean, I love so our blessed. church family, our faith family. I love Amber yeah. who's on here with us. Yes. And, I mean, she's just a gift to us. You guys, just to let you know, if you know Amber, she has this amazing team stuff. Y'all should cheer yeah. her on at night. Come on. She's amazing. Yes. Hey, Stuart, we love Stuart. Yep. So, I mean, we have all this amazing faith, family, and community. But one thing I love is, is the importance of coming together. And there's no one that I've ever mm -hmm. seen do that, what I believe, better. But what I've loved about that is you've learned how to do that as in, you don't do it on your own. We're like, we stick together. So recently, Dad had like a birthday thing. And someone yeah. said one thing about you guys is y'all stick together. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe the family of God, we should stick together. That doesn't mean, listen, it's yes. imperfect, it's messy, it's, it's comical. But it's family. But, but it's, it's family. family. And that means we fight for each other, yes. not with each other. We fight for the treasure yeah. in each other. And we call out the treasure in yes. each other and not the trash. And we've always yeah. said that we'd rather be treasure hunters than trash inspectors. You know, we all have treasure yeah. and trash in us. That's There's right. treasure and trash in me. Yeah. All of us. But I think it's so much better to be a treasure hunter than a trash inspector. And as we're hunting for the treasure, we're going to throw off the trash, yep. looking for it. But we're not inspecting the trash. That's right. And there's a difference oh, in yes. doing that. Because you're calling out the warrior yeah. in each other. The one that's the overcoming. Yeah. Because we all are overcoming different things because we're growing yeah, we and you know salvation comes in a blink of an eye but our process of growth has been many years yeah. and I'm still growing and I'll grow till I take like you know take my last breath but that's the beauty of life Come is on. knowing there's always something else there's to learn nothing. there's always more to love about people yeah. uh life is life is 
precious. It is. It is it, precious. And you know, one thing I've decided as a younger woman is I just decided that the chaos reveals the champion in you. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and let, let the chaos reveal you, the champion. Yes. So if you are a wife, mother, grandmother, whatever. That's right. You work with someone, husband, husband worker, or, yeah, friend, I mean, whatever you are. All those situations going to create life. Which There's call, chaos. It, 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 problems. Yeah. In this world, you're going to have problems. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So instead of looking at all the problems we have, we look at the solution of the promises of God. Knowing that, hey, we have life, but guess what? We have each other. We yes. have the Lord. We have the Word. We have promises. And God's working I love the song. He's working when we don't even, when we don't see it. No, he is. And He's you know, working when we don't feel it. That's He's right. working for your good. He's working for victory. He's yes. working for abundant life in your life. Well, and you know, Mom, you can't even be victorious without a fight. Oh, You no. can't win if there's not a battle. Oh, that's right. So, honestly, the, the win comes from the battle. Every time. And so, today, what made, you're a winner. What made David from the shepherd boy to playing the musician for Saul, driving the evil spirits from him, to he didn't know he was fixing to make, meet the giant. But all that was a setup for the kingdom, it was. making him a king. And a good king. A good king. It was teaching him how and to be a good king. It's so beautiful how I love it when Samuel anointed David as king. All his brothers were there, and this is a key. I was just reading it today. He says, Samuel... Man looks at the appearance, at the face. At the outer appearance. At the outer appearance. He looks at man. He, but God looks at the heart. Yes. So we, as the body of Christ, we have to pray for discernment, for God to help us look at each other's heart. Because a lot of times, the outer may look a little rough, but when we have discernment of the Holy Spirit to look at people's hearts, to see who they really are because it's the heart who we really are. To see that. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so beautiful about the Lord. He said, I look at the heart. He looked at all of all of Jesse's sons. There are eight of them. Had two daughters. He looked at all seven. He said, is there another one? And my goodness, a teenager. But I, God says, I'm going after my man because he has my heart. He saw David's heart. And you see that when he anointed him, David, the faithful David, didn't go and shine up a crown and run through town of Bethlehem saying, I'm the next king. Now, he, didn't boast, he didn't boast. He didn't boast. He didn't brag to his brothers. No, he didn't tell anybody. He didn't, he didn't go and buy him a new car or anything, a new, a new chariot or he something didn't, like he that. He didn't start writing checks on the kingdom. No. He went back to his yes, little flock come on, Mama. and was faithful. That's what God loved. Man, this man you know what is he faithful. He this managed boy. his time still as a shepherd. And and God, I'm yeah, telling you. And then you the next thing you see, Paul, uh, it, King Saul is looking for someone to play. They said, hey, there's a Jesse has a son. Why? Wow, because he's been playing music to God out there and the, under the all the elements, under the stars, when it rains, when it's cold, when it's hot. You know, he's out there being faithful to God and faithful to the little sheep. And my goodness. Uh, he brings him, and what happens? He starts, when he plays, the depression and oppression of Saul. Has to go. Uh, and then, he doesn't even know. He wakes up one ordinary morning, tending to his sheep, and gets word his daddy says, take lunch down to your brother." I mean, the king, the anointed king, is still obeying and honoring the voice of his parents. Yeah. Just because you've been promoted doesn't mean you still shouldn't honor authorities, too. And that's such a strong word. Most of us don't know how to honor those in authority still over us in leadership. That's right. When we get promotions, and we think we know how to do something, or God's done something in our life. It's so important. Because, and I mean, yeah. that's something I've had to work on. Dad David Going had to meet a Jonathan because he yeah. knew nothing, but he was a shepherd who was a right. worshiper. But his daddy said, take lunch. And because he had killed with the power of the Lord, the bear and the lion, mm -hmm. when he went, he met Goliath, where King Saul was shaking in his boots and all of someone Israel. Said, uh, Amber said, so good, always need leadership even when you level up. That's yeah, right. always. And uh, there's wisdom in that. I mean, the Lord right. said, "There's he says, even when two 
or three gather together. We're and grateful we're for prayer. you, Andy. That's yes, right. Yes, we, we need each other. Uh, we're iron not sharpening iron. Yeah. Iron sharpening iron. Don't be a long, you know, a long ranger out there. They uh, needed each other. Yes, and he had an appointment with the Jonathan that he was going to make yeah. covenant with. And Jonathan said, here, here's my, he gave him his bow and arrow. Bow taught, and arrow. taught him how to shoot with his left and his right, right hand. Actually taught David how to be a, a warrior. That's actually where David learned how to be a warrior. Yeah. And that's where David's mighty men then carried on the same characteristics Ristic, that Jonathan that, trained David Because Jonathan with. was to be king after yes. Saul. And, and you know what he knew? You're going to be king, not me. That's right. And he said, well, guess what? I'm going to undergird you and make you the best king. Oh, my gosh. What a what a principle. When we undergird each other and say, I want you to be the best you, know, you, Mom, you can I be. You know, I was thinking oh my recently, gosh. and I know there's so much more in this story that we're not going to share today. I mean, just y'all can hang out with us on another day. But there's going to be another story where David thinks he's going to build something that he ends up not building. His son ends up building it. And we'll hit that another day. But in this story, he gets, he prepares his son for the building of it. Just like Jonathan, Just like prepared, Jonathan prepared, prepared him. He what's sown some, into you? Come on, that's what I was going to say. That you sow into somebody that's right. else. Seed time and harvest. There was, there was, he had seen that happen in his own life. He thought, Sow today. Sow yeah. something today. A, a kind word. Yes. A prayer. Uh, a text. A scripture. Sow something for someone else. Why? There's such God's God. God so notices. we want to encourage you. Maybe someone has never sown that into you. I hope they have. Hopefully, you're feeling that now. We want to tell you. We now want to sow God's got you. a plan for you. That God loves you. Yes. That there's a purpose for your life. That you are a leader, and that you're anointed for such a time as this. Amen. And we believe that. But I believe by the Holy Spirit right now that the Lord is telling you that you're hearing. There's someone that you need to say something kind to. Do something kind for. Uplift. Uplift, which is actually yes. a form of like prayer. It's a giving. It's a loving. And I believe a sowing. And I believe as we end today that you yeah. are going to sow into someone else. And yes. I want you to know that when you sow, the Lord says he will never owe anyone anything. Isn't you know that oh, what the Word yes. says? He says, I won't owe anyone anything. Whatever you do, whatever smile you give, nod yes. you give, Seed you sow. He says, I'm going to repay back. Cause I, yeah. And I'm going to bless you. And I want you to know, as you sow today, heaven's keeping records of it. And you need to get to get expecting. Yes. Expect something from your Father God. Know that He wants to do something amazing for you. Yes. And I believe He's going to lead you on who you need to sow to. Amen. And it's going to change your life. And it's going to change theirs. Yes. Transformation taking place. We bless you. Thanks yes. for hanging out with us at Covenant Church. Come see us if you're ever around. Hang out with us in the Covenant living room in the cotton field in the middle of Douglas, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes. Um, thanks for sharing. We hope to see you soon. And now God bless. I'm going to try to end this thing. God bless. God bless.